we all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We are all united. Hello, good uh, morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening from where you are joining us. And welcome on this uh, collaborative session of the NRIs, uh, focusing on enable local smart solutions to close the global digital divide. Uh, apologies for um, starting a little bit later than, uh, than foreseen on the schedule. Uh, as I mentioned in the, the chat, there, were, there was another meeting where many NRIs were involved in, uh, in another room that was a little bit further away. And I think it's part of um, getting to uh, get used to physical meetings again, that we again have to calculate the distance between meeting rooms to be able to, uh, to start back-to-back -back meetings. So I'm not going to take too much time. My name is uh, Wim de Gezelle. I'm uh, part of the team uh, working with, uh, with Anja at the Secretariat. Uh, you haven't seen much of, uh, of me uh, at IGF or NRI meetings. That's because I usually uh, focus my, uh, my time on the best practice forums. Um, today, the session is... Um, Intended, I gave the general titles, but is focused on more the technical side of technical internet governance, uh, standards, and, and cooperation. I know that's for several people a, a, a topic that's far, far away from uh, what they're dealing with, on a, or, or far away because they think it's too complicated, because they uh, think it's nothing for them, especially at the local level. Uh, so it's really interesting to hear experiences from NRIs on uh, how they deal with this uh, topic, how do they approach this and how they see it. Uh, like I said, I usually work with the best practice forums. Earlier today, I had a session of the best practice forum on uh, gender and digital rights. And also there in the room, I could feel the, the difference in interaction and uh, also concentration or participation when between the introduction where you explain the general topic, the general issue, and the moment when people start to share experiences from within their country, stand up and say, well, I have uh, done this or in this in my country, this or this happens, uh, you can immediately sense that people get in more interested and get more, um, become more interactive. Uh, so. With these words, I would say let's go to our um, to our panel. We have, uh, I think, a great panel, uh, both online here in Katowice as well at uh, at home, following home or from their their office. Uh, we have uh, Hermino from uh, Madagascar, uh, Suzette from uh, Cap Verde, Osvaldo from the Dominican Republic, uh, Dusan from uh, Cedic, Sebastien from the uh, French IGF and Dustin from the IGF USA. Uh, the panelists have been asked to, uh, or were asked, or were involved in the preparation of the session, and they will brief in the first part of the session from their local NRI perspective uh, on two questions. I mean, like they wish one, either looking at the more technical internet governance standards and give a reflection on how they deal with, how they understand it from the perspective of their NRI, uh, what is relevant for them from the perspective of an NRI, or also uh, they're welcome to share initiative projects, uh, good practices uh, that they wish to share uh, from their region. For example, how they deal with, uh, with protocols, open standards, or setting up IXPs. Um, and also, I would ask the, the panelists if they can, uh, can try to explain uh, how stakeholders are involved at, uh, at the local level, how they are involved, if and how they are supportive, or if there are stakeholders missing around the table. I know that's a long, long list of, uh, of questions uh, to start with, but I'm sure during the discussion uh, with the local examples, 
uh, a lot of them will get uh, get answered. Uh, I would suggest that we um, move to our first panelist, and I see, sorry, Jennifer, that I missed you in the summing up with of the um, uh, panelists, but blame the autocorrect in my Google Doc because we are moved to another list. <laughs> but because of that, I suppose that we can start with you. Please give us your... Okay, we start with the next on the list. Uh, is uh, Mino from IGF uh, Madagascar. And please, if you start speaking, introduce yourself uh, to you that so that we all know who you are. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Harmira Kutujanpe, and I'm the current IGF Madagascar coordinator. And I'm also part of the Internet Society Madagascar chapter board. I hope you can hear me. So, uh, because I, you give me yes, the sound, the sound is, is is good, and we have you here on the on the big screen. So, okay. So I'm. Um, I will try to answer the second question uh, regarding a good initiative uh, in Madagascar. So um, for the background, uh, like uh, we saw in the introduction, um, uh, when the pandemic has hit us, uh, we see that we rely on the internet more and more. And um, for developed country, uh, the internet was already there. So uh, they had the ability to use it. But uh, for my, uh, in developing countries such as Madagascar, uh, this pandemic emphasized the digital divide which already exists. And uh, we saw that uh, many students were not able to keep track on uh, their education and many workers have lost their job or were unable to work for several months. So uh, speaking of the internet in Madagascar, we saw uh, following a survey we launched uh, for two years now that one of the big challenges regarding the internet is uh, the internet affordability and the infrastructure. So I will be speaking about two technical infrastructure who are supposed to resolve this issue. So one is um, uh, the NREN, which have been set up in Madagascar in 2012, which is um, supporting a research institution and public university all over Madagascar. So during this pandemic, we have been, uh, the NREN have been really working to ensure um, that a student can still access the internet and information. But we were also working to have an online platform available for the six public university in Madagascar. And uh, the second one regarding the internet affordability is the IXP. So in 2016, uh, we had the Madagascar IXP setting up, which is the, uh, the result of a collaboration between government, private sector, and civil society. Uh, so for the record, the IXP aimed at promoting local exchange for a more resilient internet. Well, reducing the cost by reducing the use of international links. Uh, so unfortunately, the IXP stopped working in 2019 uh, due to many reasons, like uh, the lack of policy and also the um, imbalance between the power of the private sector and uh, the initiative itself. And uh, finally, we saw during these two years of pandemic that uh, many civil society organizations have been running uh, training, uh, digital training, because we saw that um, thanks to the internet, there was a boost in the remote work, especially uh, work such as uh, software developers and uh, uh, everything that is related to technical Mm, technical work. So we saw that uh, many organizations 
have been running coding training. And uh, as an example, we had uh, two weeks ago and uh, so in 2020 training on IoT uh, for many cities in Madagascar. And also uh, we understood that uh, it is a necessity uh, to follow up every technical training with policy training. So the IGF Madagascar have been organized uh, school on internet governance for two years now. So we are preparing the second edition. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for the contribution. And I think the, you touched on, on a lot of elements and I remember that both uh, the need for investment and then developing the infrastructure, uh, but you also touched on collaboration and the importance of training. And I remember, remember especially the what you said, the technical, but also the uh, uh, technical uh, training more with regard to uh, governance and uh, not only the pure technical. Uh, I suggest that we go to uh, Cap Verde, IGF. So is it if you are online, I think you are also online participant. If, if not. Good afternoon. Did you hear me? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Suzette. I'm from. I'm the focal point of the IGF uh, Cape Verde. Uh, the Republic of Cape Verde is an archipelago and the island uh, country in the Central Atlantic Ocean. Uh, we are part of Africa. Uh, um, it's consisting of uh, 10 volcanic islands with a combined land area of about uh, 4,000 square kilometers. Um, our official language is Portuguese. Um, technologies and, uh, and internet in particular um, can be an effective ally in combating epidemics that involve stroke uh, contagion like uh, COVID-19. Uh, accurate and effective information management uh, uh, enable timely diagnosis, timely awareness and uh, propagation control. Uh, the record of uh, evidence associated with the business intelligence system can, can save life. Uh, so here in Cape Verde, uh, uh, a partnership between UN and the Cape Verde government uh, was uh, developed a system that uh, allow official information um, to be made available to collect information from user and to provide useful information to to use it uh, in this, this uh, emergency framework um, we, we had live and we live. Um, uh, also provide the, 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 the following function like uh, input monitoring, uh, incident monitoring, uh, monitoring and map with the signaling of areas with the greater of focus of occurrence of COVID-19. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this, this partnership created a COVID-19 website uh, named covid19.cv. Um, this site is the official communication channel uh, where the, the citizen can consult the, the general map of positive case, the official information and communication for the government and, and various information on how to protect, to protect themselves. Um, because in this uh, in this in this scenario, information uh, uh, is a critical vehicle for uh, to combating the the, the epidemics. Um, in this case, uh, here in Cape Verde, you have uh, uh, we have a strong involvement of uh, the telecommunication companies. Uh, and the internet service provider to ensure uh, free internet access to, to, to the, the, the page and connectivity to, to leave information for, uh, for the, the people uh, to, to combat this, this epidemic of uh, COVID-19. 
uh, and uh, and the, the access the internet access of the the social network uh, the email website uh, um, and orders uh, is uh, is free uh, the the internet has become the largest tool for sharing information um, so uh, it has an universal acceptance and is easily accessible by everyone uh, the mobile phone with internet access is a reality in in almost Cape Verdean families. So um, it's, it's very good. When we talk about connectivity access to the internet uh, here in Cape Verde is, um, is well positioned. We have a penetration rate of around 80%. Uh, so uh, that's, it's good. Um, about our, our project, uh, um, our uh, EXP, uh, the Cape Verde EXP uh, installation project uh, uh, is sponsored for, um, by ISOC Africa uh, uh, and uh, will be uh, located at here in Cape Verde. We have a, 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 a data center, the state of Cape Verde have a data center and the EXP uh, will include uh, all the internet service provider and the the, the company uh, who are in charge uh, of the internet network of the, the, the government uh, of Cape Verde and uh, then later the university come um, make part of the EXP uh, Cape Verde. And we expected that the EXP Cape Verde to be up and running by the end of the first half of the, the next year. And uh, here in Cape Verde, we have we has a, a public key infrastructure, and uh, it is uh, operational. It currently has three certifying entities: uh, one for the national identity card. Uh, um, the citizens in Cape Verde has a, a, a card um, uh, for the authentication and identification. Uh, themselves, one for the, the another for the banks. So we have a, um, a certifying identity for the banks and uh, other um, for the, the, the governance service and, and other services related to the, the government. On cybersecurity, we have a robust legal framework. We have signed the Budapest and Malabo Convention and uh, we are in the process of creating a national CSERT. Uh, we have several initiatives from the, our internet service provider uh, in order to have uh, an internet coverage and uh, at, at low cost throughout the country uh, because you are an archipelago and we, we have several shadow areas. Um, where the internet does not arrive or arrive with a little quality. So it's necessary to have a social work from the governments and the uh, internet service provider so that we can bring to this part of population quality service and uh, uh, it speak about uh, internet connectivity. Thank you. Thank you very much for this, uh, this story. Uh, Again, so many, too many things to uh, to come back on. I, two things I pick up is, we all know the internet has been very important both to collect uh, information in the pandemic, but also as an information channel. And I would stress here what you said, how important it is, how broad you have to go uh, in terms of uh, ways you try to use the internet and try to use uh, to spread information online because it's no longer or you don't get there if you just put uh, guidelines for the population on a website. No, you really have to think of where are the people that you want to reach? Do they have, are they connected? Do they connect via their phone? Do we have to reach out to them on, uh, on social networks? So that's uh, one thing I would retain from your uh, intervention. Apart from, of course, all the other nice developments and technical developments with the IXP, I think you said uh, later this year or beginning next year to go to, to Hope Online. So I think these are great, uh, great developments. I think it's time to go to a participant in the room. I think uh, Osvaldo is here or not. 
Uh, then I suggest we return to Jennifer, uh, please. Thank you, Wim. Um, my name is Jennifer Cho, part of the Secretariat of the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. So I guess we have a more um, broader view of, of, of this, uh, this particular issue. And I do want to echo what Harimino said from uh, Madagascar IGF. Of course, in Asia Pacific, the cost of access is a huge topic for us, especially exacerbated by the pandemic. Um, it highlighted the need for e-education, both for educators and students. At the APR IGF this year, we had some case studies presented uh, from Nepal, from Australia, from Singapore, from Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. And it looked at different strategies that all these uh, different nations uh, employed to combat and to also address the different needs um, that their community, especially students, really needed. So in the case of Nepal, um, there was a noted positive outcome by their Ministry of Education through its ICT Education Master Plan. And in their Read Nepal program, they collected data about public and community libraries. So that is where the community would be able to access these digital services and these education uh, materials to promote digital literacy and to be able to kind of uh, narrow the gap for students who are struggling, especially in, in this particular time. Um, it's interesting to note also for uh, Australia and Singapore, despite the big differences, you know, between the resources of these different uh, economies, it, they all reveal a really acute awareness of the community needs and um, the effectiveness of public and private partnerships. So governments working with ISPs to make sure that uh, citizens will be able to connect during these times, and especially with education services. Uh, another case study we looked at in APRGF was from Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. And in Central Asia, there was a big challenge to deliver education to children and youth in remote and rural communities, especially those who do not have access or do not have stable access, both in terms of devices, both in terms of infrastructure, and of course, uh, of just no availability to, of uh, being able to connect. And they looked at doing offline digital libraries to, to provide um, education material in local, local language, which is extremely needed in these underserved communities. And then lastly, in Vietnam, there is estimated there is about 1.5 million children who do not have enough digital services uh, or telecommunic telecommunication services to access online education. And I believe they also pushed out um, their government pushed out a, 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 a very effective uh, campaign to do a recycling and donation of these devices to all these children who are in need of uh, accessing education during the pandemic. So we, we kind of saw a spectrum of different um, solutions uh, from different uh, economies in, in the Asia Pacific region, and we learned very much from that. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, for these case studies and also for underlining the importance of uh, the local language. Uh, it's often and the second element that, that's really striking to me is you uh, mentioned that the, the importance of thinking from the perspective of the, uh, the people that need education. And they don't forget their needs when you start talking about developing big plans. And what I found, you, you gave uh, countries in Nepal, but probably also the Australia, New Zealand. I can compare that with my own country in Belgium. We also had those children have to stay at home during the pandemic. And then after two months, people start to, to push on the alarm button to say that we don't realize how many people, even in our country, just don't have a laptop or have one laptop with a very weak um, connection. Uh, which they have to share with, with a lot of people. So I think that's something that comes in every community and, and definitely also uh, important. Yes, please react. Um, thanks, Wim. And I wanted to bring out a, a statistic I heard in, in an APNIC uh, workshop yesterday about learning and resilience in the face of pandemic. And one of the uh, statistics that really surprised me was one of the panelists said that in Japan, a very developed 
nation in Asia Pacific, 5% of school children did not have access to, to connection for their you know, online schooling. And if, if a nation that is as resource rich as Japan has these problems, I mean, can you just imagine for other nations who do not have this, uh, how, how bad it might be? Thank you. Um, let's go to the next. Um, uh, what's going next on my list is the Dushan from uh, Sidik. Online. Is online. Yes. I yes, I'm here. Thank you, Wim. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, like a movie star on the big screen. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Dushan, I'm representing uh, CIDIG, uh, which means Southeastern European Dialogue on Internet Governance. Uh, this is uh, the region of Southeastern Europe, uh, but uh, with neighboring area, which is a little bit uh, more than the region that we represent. So uh, the region is also known as Balkan area. But we represent also Russia, Ukraine, uh, Armenia, Georgia, and the many others, uh, other neighboring countries to, to, to our uh, region, Turkey, etc. Uh, so uh, let me start uh, with this uh, because this is the broad region and. Um, I would like to uh, say that uh, there is a, a big diversity in problems in uh, in the countries uh, west or east in 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 that region. Uh, uh, but uh, I will give you one report that will covers the the most important technical issues uh, during the last two years, let's say, COVID, uh, covering COVID pandemic. Uh, so uh, let's start with infrastructure. Uh, what is uh, significant in, in our region in mobile networks, it's uh, 5G implementation in many countries uh, of the region. So Croatia, Serbia, Bulgaria, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and and uh, I want to highlight uh, there is no connection with COVID vaccination. So uh, uh, I will continue with uh, uh, second technical thing. This is uh, uh, fiber cables. So, so fiber to the home is now uh, a very uh, uh, very much in deployment uh, in, in, in our countries. Uh, uh, also, when we are talking about uh, rural areas, uh, they are mostly well con uh, covered, uh, not entirely, but mostly. Uh, and uh, as I said, this is a broad region, so we have uh, uh, let's say Romania as a country uh, who is uh, for the last five or ten years in top ten countries with best broadband access. Uh, so on that level, on level on of infrastructure, it's uh, quite good. I will add to this uh, number of IXPs that we we have we. Uh, practically don't have any country without I IXP. Um, we have some countries with, uh, 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 for example, Ukraine with uh, 19, but 10 operating, or uh, Bulgaria 6, but uh, 4 operating, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of IXPs in, in, in that region. Uh, we, ca we can say the infrastructure is uh, in the last two years uh, in develop development uh, in our area uh, with new technologies. So uh, uh, we are implementing the latest technologies uh, uh, in our area. Uh, well, we are, we all know that uh, COVID um, uh, changed the way we live. Uh, 
Uh, so, uh, what is significant on a, s a service level? So, significant in our area is uh, uh, increase of online payments in all countries, uh, different payment payment methods, uh, but um, uh, mostly uh, via uh, uh, payment payment cards. Uh, some countries uh, uh, improved uh, online or let's say mobile payments with uh, QR codes uh, and similar solutions, uh, such as Serbia, for example. So uh, uh, everything is uh, moved to internet, trade of goods and services. Uh, so this result, uh, the result of that move was instant growth, uh, growth in um, um, in number of uh, domains. Uh, when we speak about service levels, so so domain names are uh, uh, sold uh, very much during these last two years. So we have increased number of tot in total uh, domain names. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we, uh, um, but um, uh, uh, the, the significant part of these services is uh, that everything went online. So uh, uh, we have a lot of domestic um, of domestic solutions for online payment systems. So you have a lot uh, a lot more websites, web shops, uh, and you have a lot of uh, CMSs uh, uh, for web shops. And also, uh, this follows uh, uh, um, uh, with uh, growth in earnings for delivery services and uh, postal services. So uh, uh, you are all aware that travel, and especially business travel, is decreasing. Uh, and during pandemics, there was no face-to-face uh, -face meetings this uh, this is uh, uh, the first hybrid meeting uh, after the covid pandemic uh, but uh, all that uh, moved uh, every other businesses to uh, uh, some some sort of uh, uh, internet meetings like zoom google etc etc but not only that schools, uh, education uh, are uh, in at one point uh, uh, in all countries were moved to internet. So uh, it is uh, very interesting to see uh, how uh, people, uh, uh, not only kids in schools, but uh, teachers were, were solving problems with uh, Google Classroom, uh, Moodle, or other uh, way of uh, reaching uh, reaching kids. Even even Viber was used. Viber groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so uh, uh, some states, um, as a result of COVID pandemic, um, uh, some states in our region uh, use this. COVID to uh, rethink regulations in the internet area. So, so uh, uh, to, to implement new uh, laws and uh, new rule sets. And uh, I can give you one example. Uh, uh, um, there is uh, uh, a significant, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, government of, of Serbia uh, invested in uh, IT infrastructure. They opened uh, uh, a data center in, in Serbia, state that uh, owned that data center, and uh, deployed uh, a supercomputer NVIDIA based uh, for academic purposes. So, so it's a uh, it's like, and it's not the only country that was 
thinking like that, most of the countries in our region were, were resetting the, the thoughts about uh, uh, infrastructure or regulation uh, of, of the internet. Also, uh, I think we said this uh, too many times that uh, uh, we have increased number of uh, cyber criminal activities uh, and also, uh, uh, well, uh, if you don't have anyone to blame, so blame Ru Russians, uh, Russian hackers. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, uh, they are in our region. Uh, so uh, state started to uh, um, to uh, pay more attention to cybersecurity entirely, uh, building laws and building uh, cyber uh, computer emergency response teams for uh, re responding that uh, uh, increase of of cyber activities, cyber criminal activities. Uh, and uh, last, uh, but not the least, from uh, our region, uh, it's visible, uh, very visible, uh, especially this year, not last year, but this year, uh, uh, small ISPs, uh, registrars, and um, uh, le uh, let's say even mobile providers wo uh, were bought by, by bigger players, foreign players uh, from outside of the region, mostly from the west, uh, west part of Europe. Uh, so, uh, and there is uh, uh, some sort of consolidation of the, of the market. So, so you, you have less players, but uh, bigger players uh, uh, on the markets uh, in, in our area. That's all from me. Thank you very much, all. It's, it's always difficult to say all after a, a whole list of all the initiatives. Uh, while you were talking, one, um, one thing that came to my mind is that actually is incredible. And I think we all share that in, from our local experience and countries, how COVID has pushed, uh, was like the push needed for uh, innovation and for people to, and then businesses to start using uh, some digital solutions, some e-commerce solutions. Um, and how also how inventive people, small businesses, uh, even the smallest businesses have been in, um, in, in, in going online to be able to continue to work during the, the pandemic. Uh, but in the meantime, the second thought is this was only possible and this only works if the, basic, the basics are there. So if the infrastructure is there and, and, and because without that, people can, can be inventive. It's, it's like, we can all say COVID-19 was very good in, in, to get people think of new solutions. But if you were in a region or, or in an area in one of the countries where uh, the basics were not yet there, uh, this didn't, this, uh, didn't help. Uh, so thank you for the experience. Moving on uh, to France, I think Sebastien is online joining us. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Sebastien Bachelet. I am a, a member of the team organizing IGF in, in France. I am an honorary chair of the Isaac French chapter and, and chair of the Euro laws at the end user uh, from Europe within uh, ICANN. And um, I, I would like to take this opportunity to, to first think that uh, what it's important and Isaac and other member of the IGF in France are doing the same. We are working at different level, IGF Global, uh, Eurodig and uh, uh, IGF in France, but also within uh, uh, ICANN or within other arena where it's important to be participating. But when we are talking about local, um, I will say that um, um, at the local level, it's very difficult to be involved in the, such uh, um, area. And, and at the, even at the national level, uh, when, when you have difficulty to, to be connected, uh, when you have a, a difficulty to understand how internet is working, uh, 
uh, it's it's quite difficult. Therefore, it's why we are trying to to be at uh, both level locally, and we try uh, cooperation and at the global level. Um, when 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 we talk about uh, a question at the local level, we we are both in in trouble for um, bandwidth purposes. When the COVID start, we were lucky, for example, to have trained twenty first time a user of internet from senior um, senior people from, from uh, my region and um, it was good for them but importantly hundreds of those must have been trained to be able to access and to use the internet during the COVID and we tried to do that even during the COVID but it was uh, of course more difficult and, 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 and when you talk about access yeah we 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 can consider that in France you have the access, but when you are working for a, a small business and um, or a small association, non for profit, and uh, your home is connected through a satellite, and you need to access your um, uh, working um, uh, element or, or your your working. Uh, uh, laptop and 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 not accessing uh, to your data or to your software uh, it's it's quite complicated uh, to stay at home and and um, having uh, uh, almost not possibility to really work and uh, and not be allowed to travel even for 20 kilometers at, during one time therefore it's why we are um, very happy that very needed uh, but but uh, hopefully uh, soon, within one or two years, that uh, all the our region will be connected through fiber, and hopefully it will be fiber to the home to allow that. Uh, but when when also we talk about uh, global and local, uh, the question of language it's important. For example, today, okay, I and as my colleagues, we 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 are all talking in English, but uh, um, it's not fair for a lot of people, and um, it's not good for the diversity. Uh, we, 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 we need to struggle for diversity, and diversity is language first. Uh, therefore, um, I, I heard that somebody, three speakers yesterday, just talk in French, even if it was not interpreted. I didn't try to do that uh, to respect to the audience, but, but uh, IGF need to consider that for each and every uh, meetings um, and and uh, uh, the question of language it's also about uh, uh, domain names and access to internet uh, universal acceptance it's still something we have to struggle for and uh, and it's important for example um, the, the question of um, is my name uh, my first name Sébastien in French with an accent or Sébastien is the same person it seems that there are people, technical people, who decide not. It's not the same. If I take another example, maybe more accurate, it's Quebec and Quebec. If you put an accent and not an accent, it's still Quebec. And um, some people decided, no, it's two different worlds. And therefore, we may imagine to have uh, two different regions with this such a name. Um, that's, that's some of the, of the issue. Um, to to to, um, uh, to to end with some uh, uh, information uh, locally, we 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 really uh, need to find a way, not just to have technical um, standards open to be used within our community, but really to have the possibility to uh, access to internet, to be trained, and to be uh, uh, also not just use internet we, we can't end up to a world where we will just have internet and uh, i am concerned and we are concerned with the fact that uh, some of us travel to poland great um, you are the happy few i guess you are the happy but you are very few and uh, i am not sure that uh, it's the best way to show to the world uh, what we need to do if if uh, if the next time, I hope that 
more people will be able to travel and uh, that uh, it will be more uh, open. And uh, But it's not the problem as, as a reason. It's not IGF uh, uh, to be blamed, but, but uh, it's, it's very painful to see such a room and, and to be from home just participating. Um, the, the last point, uh, or two last points. The first one is that, uh, as you know, the, uh, France will take the presidency of the European Union the 1st of, of January. Um, as you know, it will be at the same time that the presidential election. It's, uh, it's not the best uh, way, uh, I guess, to be sharing a, a, a new union and to be at the same time uh, running for an election. And my last point is that we have to be really careful about what end up to law, to regulation, and to multi-stakeholder um, uh, internet governance. Uh, it's something I hope that this uh, uh, meeting and the IGF in general will help to uh, go into the good direction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, uh, for these points. Uh, and I would like to link one of the points that you, you said at the, uh, at the end, the importance of uh, multi-stakeholder uh, cooperation and, and, and governments and also to the, towards the legislators, linked to something you said very much in the beginning, uh, how important it is to at least provide also a basic understanding of how the internet is working, uh, because it's very difficult to trust in something or to trust in a network or a system or um, an infrastructure if you have no idea how it's working. So I think you made the, those points uh, together. Uh, then I see that uh, Svaldo had said hi in the, uh, in the chat. So please, if you really take the floor and share us your experience. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as representative from NRI in Dominican Republic, I am glad to share with you here today in Katowice and see the different faces. Well, in Dominican Republic, before the pandemic, we had uh, a model to provide internet to people uh, unconnected via the government agencies, via the metro and the public places. When the COVID arrived, uh, uh, the statistics of connection by that time was around 70% of people. When pandemic arrived, everybody came to their home and it was around uh, 50% the government had to, to deal with the problem of education, but the problems also of the continuity of the productivity. But that, it was, that part was more from the private sector. For continued education in a transition of governments, they had to implement a, a quick creation of edu educative contents for transmitting, broadcasting via TV and radio. That helped a lot in the process, but the new government quickly implemented a, a cabinet of a digital transformation that called all stakeholders to join the different axes that are related to the like innovation, education, connectivity, uh, economy and things like that. Then uh, we created this uh, digital agenda document with more than 300 action plans that are in the process of budgeting uh, in order to implement by next year. Uh, for, uh, in, by Internet Society, we created an IXP uh, which created the opportunity to attract the digital contents locally and provide a better uh, uh, connectivity inside the island. So uh, different aspects were working uh, in a way that made possible that the new government 
uh, stars to bring connectivity to uh, schools uh, to allow them to uh, to take advantage of the digital contents this process uh, showed uh, the how different models can be affected by crises that are not intended to be and uh, responses are not so fast uh, when you're talking about social communities needing to continue their process. But an important lesson also is how the multi-stakeholder approach can contribute uh, that every sector can uh, add value in the process to accommodate or or to create a zone of comfort that can help to uh, alleviate the, the different problems. Uh, and in this process, uh, we as NRI and Internet Society were part of this process uh, called by the government in order to, to create these different uh, processes. And, uh, a broadband plan has been created in order to uh, connect the unconnected, especially on rural areas, semi-urban, and to uh, make a better uh, space for everybody to get connected and take advantages of these opportunities. We hope uh, this year already 5G has been created and the, the licitation of the 700 megahertz uh, for the digital uh, dividends has been in place. And we expect that by next year, things uh, get better in, in, the in the connectivity to the last mile, no? That is an important uh, asset uh, affected by the crisis, but shows a best a how best practices in these cases can help in the process. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you very much. I think it's, it's you, you mentioned one thing that was important, how multi-stakeholder and discussions take time for often solutions that cannot wait. Same for us. I would say immediately go to, uh, to Dustin of the USA IGF and apologies there that we only have short time, but please take the floor. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, and no worries. I know there's a, a lot of topics to get through and a lot of people that want to speak on this. Um, so I'll just get right into it and I'll keep it uh, relatively short. But, um, you know, obviously it's true in the U.S. as it is in the rest of the world that the digital divide has many dimensions um, from access to broadband to the affordability that we've heard about and the need for digital literacy. And um, at the IGF USA, we've discussed a variety of approaches from the federal government to local governments to ISPs, big and small, with a wide range of business models, including the community networks, working to build out the infrastructure and the roles of library schools and other anchor institutions that uh, have an important role in access, knowledge, and opportunity. Uh, one thing that I haven't heard a lot about, we talked about the affordability of, of access, but also I think it's important to consider, and this is something we've discussed a lot at the IGF USA, the structure of funding programs and what that means for how infrastructure is deployed and the role that local communities have in, in that deployment. And that's something that is a big topic of discussion in the US as we think about um, funding those that haven't been connected yet at, that have become more apparent during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we have seen some steps uh, in the funding programs from the federal government to allocate funding in a way that gives more discretion to uh, the communities being served. And uh, this uh, can arguably be 
an approach that gives these communities more input and impact on the and, and just capacity to handle the internet infrastructure and the technical aspects of internet governance that we're, we're talking about and there's just I'll just use one example uh, since we're running short on time that we heard from at the IGF USA, <clears throat> which is an organization that has a holistic program that they describe themselves as an ecosystem of ecosystem builders. So they work directly with rural communities and tap into funding programs to develop a plan from the bottom up that focuses on everything from the deployment of broadband access driven by the local community to how the local government deploys services, uh, availability of health and education, business opportunities, and supporting tech entrepreneurship within these rural communities so that uh, they're being empowered, not just to be consumers of the access and services and tools, but also to be creators. And uh, they believe that when done right, this can be a very powerful way to approach it. Um, and, and also see rural innovators as uh, a resource to tap into for the future of open source technologies and protocols because the startup capital for a lot of these open source projects relies on the collaboration of, of communities. And so in these communities that they have uh, worked within and helped find funding and build out infrastructure. Many of them have open source incubators and this type of empowerment can be a huge step toward local smart solutions to address the digital divide and all of the various interrelated components, including the pieces of technical internet governance that we've uh, discussed here today. Um, and I think we're already over time now, so I'll just stop there. Thank you, uh, thank you very much indeed. Um, but before uh, ending the uh, ending the the session, I wanted to see with we had the remote help of Bangladesh online. If they wanted to share, I know they had posted a question in the uh, in the chat. If they have some general observations, they would like to uh, contribute. So. I don't know if they can connect.